big thing detrimental to us this week is, is last week's success. So, um, you know, we've got to push on and move on. Um, I am proud of them last week of being able to handle a five game week. Um, that's never easy to do. Um, I was real proud of all three facets of our game. We took care of our defense, which has been very good all year. Um, I thought our hitters did a great job in five games uh, and being able to hit and not only hit, but become more physical. Um, so their approach was really good uh, and they kept it throughout the whole week, uh, which I, I thought really made us good. And then the pitching staff, I thought did an outstanding job. And then the, 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 the bullpen uh, was really phenomenal, being able to handle the workload they had to handle in a, in a Tuesday game, a Wednesday game, and then a three-game series on the weekend. We're able to pick up Colton Schmidt. Uh, that's really helped us. We've got another weapon out of the bullpen now. He's pitched uh, really, really well. We knew he was a good arm, so we're glad to see and pick him up. We really needed him to help us. Um, and then I thought Nick Lee threw really well. I think out of the first inning, he came back to, I think, the old Nick Lee um, that, that he's been. So that was good for us. We were able to win last week in many different ways. A close game, one nothing, um, come from behind. So, again, um, you know, our biggest thing is to press on. Um, as I told them, um, you know, over the weekend, you know, the biggest problem you have in, in, in this business is, or in any business really is people work to do less. The more they have success, they believe they've earned the right for, to have a mulligan. Um, I get to take today off being I had a great game yesterday. And, and, and that's a tough theory. We have to, you know, human nature tells us that, you know, we want to sit on a couch with a 400 pound bag of Doritos and watch the idiot box all day. And then when somebody kicks your feet and takes your Doritos away and cuts your TV off and gets you off that couch, you're mad. And so, this is a big fight we have in, in success because failure doesn't really break you up. I mean, failure is easy. You fail, it's over, you go home. Success is way harder to manage than failure because people believe that when you do good, now I've earned the right to do less. And that's not, that's not, that's not the thing. You've got to understand that with success, you earn the right to do more. And so hopefully they understanding this and understanding that, um, you know, I think that's what's helping us in a streak is that we, we're understanding that we've earned the right to do more now instead of we won one game, woohoo, um, that gives us to take a day off. That, that gets you in trouble. Um, being elite is never on sale. It's never 50% off and it's never discounted. And that's why becoming elite is so tough because um, human nature says I've, I've succeeded. So now I've earned the right to do less uh, with my success or Mike's success. People probably think, you know, we're working for retirement as compared to working to win a national championship. There's a difference between working to get a national championship and working for retirement. But that's what people do in life. They work to retire. Um, and so this is the biggest thing why you have to be able to handle success and understand that you've got to earn the right to do more. So this week we, we've earned the right to do more. Um, hopefully they understand that. And uh, again, leave last week's success behind. And, and continue to pull forward. So questions you might have. Well, it, it could be better. You know, if Jack wouldn't have came up with, with, with a tight forearm, um, he said that when he caught that ball barehanded at LSU, when it pulled him back like that, he kind of he kind of felt a little something. Um, we took him out after two innings last week for precautionary measures. So we'll, we'll see him this week. We didn't take him with us. Uh, we left Thursday um, to Little Rock. So we left him behind to, to, to do rehab and everything. So we'll see him this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guillory will get a start for sure. Uh, we were able to pitch through the weekend without, without Guillory. Um, so he'll get a start for sure. And then we'll, 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 we'll ID Jack, see how he feels, and then kind of decide how we're going to go after the second game or the first game, depending on how Jack feels. Well, you know, ever since we moved him up to the two hole, you know, he's, he's really responded well for us. And, but no, that's, that's, that's important. You know, I mean, that's a senior, 
you 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 want coach just talked about a senior you you want the seniors to be able to give you what a senior should give you um that's consistency because they've been through so much um and and he's been through some you know the junior college system <clears throat> and then from the junior college system into here kind of backed up a little bit now now I think he's coming forward so it's it's it's, it's good time and you know we, we he had a great fall but then he kind of stumbled out of the gate when the season started and now he's back in and, and doing well for us but no he's he's really you know energized our lineup definitely Well, I, I, I think I think I think our approach as hitters has gotten better. Um, when when coach just talked about it, you know, having maybe maybe you know everybody but two people kind of on the same page or whatever, you know that that that's the key to a hitting lineup is is the approach. You know, we, we wear it on these bracelets. It's it's part of our motto, attitude and approach. It's the second A in what we do. The I and the T is for intensity and toughness, but the approach is so important. And I think our approach um, was not consistent. Um, and, and it needs to be consistent with nine people. So that's tough to get, okay? Especially when nine people are trying to get them, them. I mean, you know, as I tell Sensley, every time he hits a home run like yesterday, to help win the game, I asked him again, you know, uh, who'd you hit that for? You know, he said us. Because they need to understand that, you know. I mean, Gunner makes the big pitch for us. He doesn't make it for Gunner. Um, Sinsley hits the home run for us. Joe Robbins plays third base and makes that great play for us. He doesn't make that for Joe Robbins. But but they come up in a system of getting them them. And so then you put them in a system where, um, you know, like early in the year, two times we had bases stolen and we fouled off a pitch. That's that's not a, that's not, that's that's not an unselfish approach. Yesterday we steal 01 on Zach Lafleur. He takes to get to 02 to get the stolen base. That's approach. That's approach. That says I'm going to give myself up. I could swing at this, but I see you have the bag stolen, so I'm going to go ahead and go down in the count 02 for you. When you can when you can get that, you're going to get better as a team, and you're going to get consistent as a team. But, but when people are fighting for their own results and fighting for the draft and everything else, that's, that's, that's what you have to manage in this business is to get off results, get off the draft, get off all these other external issues and get on to us, get on to us. And that takes, that sometimes can take a while because of the way they play leading up to us. There's no bunting going on. Yesterday we asked Handsome to bunt. He, he bunted. I mean, we, we asked the people to squeeze. They've squeezed over the last week and a half or two. You've got to give yourself up. I know when you look down there and you see squeeze, um, you know, you can go, golly, you know, I mean, I, I can hit. I don't care if you can hit. I'm not asking if you can hit. What I'm asking you to do right now is, is get on us. Get the squeeze down and get on us. That's what I need right now. I don't need to worry about your feelings. If I've got to worry about your feelings, then you're not bought in. When a player is totally bought in, coach will tell you this, you don't have to worry about his feelings. When they're not bought in, you got to manage feelings. And so the, the difference maker, I think, is our approach. It started at Nichols. We got a better approach against Nichols. And from there, our approach has been good. And, and it's starting to be an approach throughout the lineup. And that's the key to consistency. Um, we have a pitching system. You have a hitting system. If they don't follow the pitching system, then then we're not going to be consistent. But but as hitters, it's so tough because I'm managing one guy a night on a mound. Maybe one or two more, you know, with the bullpen. The hitting coach, he's managing nine guys a night. Um, that 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 a lot of them are hooked on results. So I think what's made us consistent. Personally, it's just I think our approach has been better with our hitters. Not hitting our approach. They're not going to hit every night. They're just not going to. They fail 70% of the time. But you should have the same approach every night. Your approach shouldn't change. And I think our approach has gotten better one through nine. Since they swung at a breaking ball and looked really bad at it and then got back and got his chest out over the plate on the next pitch, that guy hung it. 
and, and he hit it a mile. It's his approach that let his power kick in because early in the year, he lacked power. Fontenot had more home runs. But, but, but it's because his approach was bad. It wouldn't let his power play. And so, um, you know, coach will tell you this too in teaching hitting. You know, there's a difference between effortless power and powerless effort. Big difference. And so it, it's, it's the approach, I think, that's gotten better. And then they've kept the approach consistently. So that's what's made us consistently. And now what we have to do is not divorce ourselves back away from that approach over winning or losing. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I think what we went through from the first half, you know, prepares us hopefully for the second half. I've always said this. You've heard me say this. You know, it's nothing's ever good or bad. It's how you look at it. Um, and, and, you know, you, you've got to you've got to walk through what you have to walk through and be willing to go through that process that coach talked about a minute ago uh, to get where you need to be. Um, process to me stands for habitual change. And that's why going through a process is so hard because people are going to have to change their habits. And if they're not willing to change their habits, then they're not going to be willing to go through the process that it's going to take to be good or be elite. Our whole goal is to try to be elite. I, 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 I'm, I'm allergic to mediocrity. I'm allergic to, 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 to just being mediocre or complacent. Um, I, I don't want to be around people like that either. Um, and, 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 but being elite is tough, man. Being elite is tough because you have to become elite individually first. That's why I love the SEALs, because you can't go down there, mediocre, and attach yourself to the Navy SEALs and become a SEAL. can't. You're going to have to become elite individually first, then you'll be able to attach yourself to an elite group. And in life, it's easier to just attach yourself to something that's already elite. That's easy. But, 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 but. That's not how this works. You have to become elite individually first, and you have to be willing to walk through what you're going to have to walk through. Our own personal life's like that. I mean, God doesn't, he, he, he does the things for us with what we have left in our life, not, not with what we've lost, you know? You, you look at a cancer patient that loses a, a leg or a foot, okay, well, God's not going to do anything with them with what they lost. They can either hang around and mope about what they lost, or what he's going to do is he's going to take what's left of them, and he's going to do something with them. That's, that's, that's how this works. He takes what you have left. If you lost a lot of money, you only got $5 left in your pocket, and you know what he does? He, he, he does something with what you have left. But too many people want to focus on what they lost. And, and, and that's not what you need to do. Like Nick Lee, he, he had to walk through what he had to walk through. But if you look at the backstory, you know, our bus goes to church every Sunday. That guy's been on the bus from church for two years, has never missed a bus for church. We don't make it mandatory, but he's never gotten off the bus. And when he's gone through this tough time a whole month about having to read about he's not doing good and he's not this and what's wrong and what's this and what's that, he never got off the bus. He never showed up one morning and said, you know what, I'm asleep in this morning. You know, he kept going to church. And I told him this Sunday when we walked in together, I said, hey, hit your knees today and thank him. Not because you won yesterday and not because you pitched good, but thank him for what he took you through. Thank him for the courage that he gave you that it was going to take to get you to walk through what you had to walk through. And in life, that's what you have to do. He's going he's gonna to use what you have left. You can't worry about that what you've lost. He's going to take what you have left and he's going to use you. And that's what I keep trying to tell the team. Don't worry about the front half of the season. Don't, don't worry about the first half of your life. Make the rest of your life the best of your life. Why do you have to worry about what you lost? Why do you have to worry about the past? Why, do, why does your perception of me have to become my reality? I don't need your perception to make my reality. Some people say we couldn't hit early in the year. I don't need your perception to become my reality. As I told the coaches and the hitters the other day, I think you can hit. Don't listen to other people and don't let your perception become your reality. That's what too many people do in life. They let their perception, how do you perceive me, to, 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 to decide that that's going to become my reality. It doesn't have to be that. I still think we can win. I still think we can hit. I still think we can win a championship. 
I mean, you know, but early, you know, oh boy, that you know, you fall out of the rankings and all that stuff. I just don't need your perception to be my reality. And in life, as I kept telling Nick the other day, stay grinding, work through it. Um, I can't tell you why he's taking you through what he's taking you through. But in life, you have to be willing to walk through what you have to walk through to ultimately get where you want to go. And I think that everything we walk through early in the year from, from the missing 700 at-bats to start the season, um, being spooked because we lost those 700 bats, all the construction, all the moving around, the travel, all that stuff. I think all that happened for a reason to hopefully prepare us for, for hopefully a stretch run. So we've got another five game week. It is what it is. Um, it's not good or bad. It's how you look at it. Um, hopefully they're getting to the point and I close with this. I, I still say this at the end of the day, there's two kind of players. One of them wants to get into the arena for the attention that it's going to bring him. And the other one wants to get in the arena because he's got a chance to throw down and compete. And hopefully we're getting closer to the team that doesn't care about rankings, doesn't care about the first half of the season, doesn't care about a win streak, doesn't care about anything except this Tuesday. We get another chance to get into the arena to throw down and compete. And if we can just leave it at that, night in and night out, I think they'll be successful. But we can't want to get into the arena for the attention it's going to bring us. Uh, we got to be willing to get in the arena because it's an opportunity to compete. So that's what we're doing this week. Doesn't matter. It's a five-game week. It's an opportunity for us to get back in the arena and compete. Um, well, we won't go into a regional in, at, at Alex Box at LSU, and their head coach uh, for Sam Houston State is now the head coach at Texas. We were very good friends with him, um, and um, we, we played Sam Houston, of course, in the regional, and we just were good friends with him, and when he got the Texas job, um, he, he appreciated the way we competed against him and, and has always respected our program, and so... He, um, he called us and asked if we wanted to play, and um, we, wanted to go play at the, 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 we wanted to go play at the Pro Park. So we accepted that, and then it led to a home-and-home. Home. We have now a three-game series with them. Uh, the following year, we go there for three. He's coming back here for three. So that would be good for our fans.